Kelly. It is great to be back after an amazing week of vacation with my family. I want to thank the entire Today Show crew who helped to fill in while I was out. I heard it was a very fun week. Now, look, at I did not manage to watch TV last week, but I, I did. I think I needed to. <laughs> look what was happening here while I was away. All right, so Keir, you should not be wearing those socks with those flip-flops. And how did I miss Jacob's Merce? We're going to have to talk to Jacob, right? His man purse. I can his see Merce. how useful it can be. I do want to have a fanny pack. Yeah. Because I just feel like it can be hands-free. But he's not wearing it on his fanny, though. Right. You don't want, yeah. you don't want your husband sure. to be wearing a purse. Yeah. But somehow Soberoff managed to make everything look good. Um, okay, so we have a, a ton to catch up on. Uh, and here to help me break it all down is NBC's Stephanie Gosk and Dylan Dreyer, and also the co-host of PBS's In Principle, Amy Holmes. Welcome. So much to get into. So as you know, um, just as I was leaving for vacation, a story broke in The New Yorker about sexual harassment allegations over at CBS. And this was a big one. Uh, it, it took aim at CBS chief Les Moonves and at the executive producer of 60 Minutes and former CBS chief uh, Jeff Fager. Now, the story continues to develop uh, even today. And Steph, you have an update on it this morning. Yeah, we do. I think we're going to run the, uh, a story on it. B basically, this is um, Kelly Call, who is the chief of entertainment over at CBS, made some comments over the weekend. And, and this is what he had to say. A press tour Q&A with a CBS executive about fall programming, quickly changing topic Sunday to sexual misconduct allegations against CBS chief Les Moonves. The very first question was related to a medical drama that got canceled, uh, but almost every question that followed was about sexual misconduct allegations. CBS Entertainment chief Kelly Call bombarded by reporters with questions about sexual misconduct at the network. He attempted to defend the corporate culture at CBS while also trying to convey to reporters that the company is taking all sexual misconduct allegations very seriously. Now, calls for Moonves to step down are growing. A truck parked outside that conference posting, we believe the women sexually assaulted and harassed by Les Moonves. Why doesn't CBS fire Moonves now? Six women detailed misconduct allegations against the CBS chief, ranging from forcible touching or kissing to physical intimidation between the 1980s and 2000s. All told The New Yorker their careers suffered after rejecting his advances. In a previous statement, Moonves said in part, I recognize that there were times decades ago when I may have made some women uncomfortable by making advances. Those were mistakes, and I regret them immensely. But I always understood and respected and abided by the principle that no means no, and I have never misused my position to harm or hinder anyone's career. This is where editing starts. Also this morning, CBS says 60 Minutes executive producer Jeff Fager will not return to work today as scheduled and will instead extend his vacation. Fager has denied anonymous claims that he inappropriately touched women and allowed harassment in the news division. An investigation into how harassment complaints were handled at CBS News that was launched following Charlie Rose's firing for sexual misconduct is reportedly expected to conclude later this month. The network telling NBC News in a statement, having heard the investigation will be wrapping up soon, Jeff has decided to stay on vacation. And his, uh, his, his representative tells us it was entirely voluntary because he understood that this investigation was about to wrap up, so figured better stay out of the office while they, you know, button it up. But the, can we talk about this comment from Kelly Call, the, the uh, it's CBS president, uh, entertainment hey, president, entertainment, yeah. uh, who comes out and says there's no systemic problem. Well, I mean, here's really the, the issue for, for a company like CBS, um, and many like it. Um, you have, to, you have to convince the people that work for you and the people that may come to work for you and the people that care about your company that you don't have this culture of either enabling or turning a blind eye to these issues. And there were allegations in this New Yorker article that that was indeed the case. And CBS is coming out very strongly against those allegations, which, if you think about it, are quite separate from the specific allegations against Les Moonves. But... but he doesn't know whether there's a systemic problem yet. That's why they hired Proskauer Rose to take a hard look at that. And the investigation is ongoing. 
I find, I mean, I know that the reporting includes many women apparently saying, look, this wasn't my experience. This hasn't been my experience. CBS, Leslie Stahl, famous 60 Minutes correspondent, said, this is sad. This, this is not my experience here. I understand people wanting to defend the company, but having been through this now, <laughs> right, a, a couple of times, I, I, I just want to say, hold, keep, keep your powder dry. You don't know. Just because it wasn't your experience doesn't mean it wasn't the experience of many of your colleagues, right? And I'm not condemning Fager or Moomez or any of those guys. They're investigating that as they should, and they'll, I trust they'll look into it. This law firm is a very good one. Um, but it isn't particularly helpful to say it never happened to me or it wasn't my experience. That, does, that doesn't actually redeem your corporation. And I would say, having been a woman who was harassed, who knew that while others were saying, never me, never me, you feel undermined, and somehow you feel pitted against your colleagues when they're coming out and saying that because it, it somehow feels challenging of your own experience when you know it did happen to you, and I'd be very glad if it didn't happen to my female colleagues, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen to many others. Well, and in Ronan Farrow's piece in The New Yorker, uh, there are women who are saying that they felt coerced into making a public statement that it didn't happen to me, that this is a colleague or a boss that treated me well, when maybe they knew rumors or they'd heard stories. You know, Megan, one of the things that leaps out at me with all of these different cases, including Harvey Weinstein, is that apparently no action is taken until it has to be published in the New York Times or the New Yorker. Give me a break. The other thing that we learn is with these harassers, and again, they are uh, innocent until proven guilty, and there's an ongoing investigation at CBS, is they treat their victims like potato chips. They don't have just one. There are multiple, <laughs> okay? I wasn't sure where that was right? going. Okay. And, <laughs> yes. and the other thing that we see is that it seems time and time again that the harassers are treated as if they're indispensable, irreplaceable, and yet the women who are being victimized are treated like garbage. Well, can I say, somebody was asking me, why do you think so many of these cases have popped up in media, right, in media? And I say because media tends to be male-dominated industries, uh, in which you have a few key male executives considered indispensable and many, many powerful, smart, attractive women. Um, and I think any industry dominated by men in which the men are considered indispensable, look at the men who have gone down, uh, thanks to the Me Too movement, considered indispensable, untouchable. Uh, and I think it's, a it's problem. worth pointing out to your point as mm -hmm. well, Amy, that here at NBC, they took action not because of an article, but because someone did come forward. And although the movement really was generated from media and investigative reporting, you do see companies actually doing things as a result of it on their own initiative, which is what you hope would right. happen, right? But well, NBC did not hire an outside investigator and took a lot of heat for that. that and, you know, there's a reason to do that, which is I understand everybody believes in the internal investigation here at NBC, not everybody, but, you know, at the top levels. But the, the troops need to have faith in that investigation as well. They need to believe that if they go in and talk to somebody representing the company, that that person is not more loyal to the executives than they are to the women who have a complaint to make. Uh, and and that's, it's good that Proskauer Rose is, is looking into this for CBS, the outside law firm. At Fox News, they hired counsel. They hired outside counsel that would report to the executives. So it wasn't completely independent. It wasn't like, you know, we're going to go publish this in the New York Times. They had to report to the executives. But it worked. And Fox News has worked to revamp its culture. And I think NBC is doing the same to some extent. And I would like to just point out also for the audience and everyone at home, it's not just the women in front of the camera that you might expect. It's also women behind the camera, young women starting out their news careers as producers, story editors, and so forth. Um, and it, it's a problem. Well, that's the thing, because... Um, too often in these cases, you see, and I, I'm not condemning Moonves or Fager, I don't know what happened in the CBS case, but too often in these cases, you see these executives who have so much power. One of the women told Ronan Farrow, and I quote, the culture of older men who have all this power and you are nothing uh, exists here. That was her claim at CBS. They have all this power and they think because they attempt to flirt with a young woman or in some the more egregious cases actually have an affair with a young woman at the, at the company, that the young woman is there completely voluntarily and they just found him particularly dazzling. And I am here to tell you executives, it's not true. It's not true. Don't have an affair with, don't come on to someone who's in a subordinate position to you. It's not appropriate. And I think we know that now. Okay. And new details on the reboot of yet another very famous, once very popular sitcom, Murphy Brown. Did you guys ever watch Murphy Brown? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Cause we were wondering, 
I'm 47, and I was wondering how, like, do the young people know what Murphy Brown? <laughs> Dylan, you're yeah, I know Murphy okay. Brown. <laughs> so it's coming back, and this is actually a very timely time for Murphy Brown to come back because it's all about a journalist. And she she's coming back, and apparently she's now going to be at at a cable station. Um, they've got almost all the entire cast, and I guess they're going to use this as a lens to take. I don't know if it's shots at the media or to rehabilitate the media. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a Fox News type entity against which they program called Wolf News. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, and uh, I don't know. What do you think? Is it a good idea? What's Murphy Brown's role in it? Is she? She's still Murphy Brown. She's a journalist. Okay. She She's, is just yeah, a journalist. Yeah. She's not. Not no, just a journalist. Saying. I don't mean it like that. <laughs> I just mean, I didn't know she's moved character. up within. Would you watch this or do you think Absolutely. this is, is this just media loving to see stories I'm, about I'm media? I'm just nostalgic. So any reboot, I'm, I'm usually a big fan. Yeah, of. I, mean, I, remember, yeah. I remember Murphy Brown when she started actually was, it, it was really avant-garde. I mean, she came out and she was a single mom yeah. and they took on these issues and it was controversial and she was tough and sassy and really funny yep. and super smart. And I remember being a kid, a teenager, mm -hmm. watching her and thinking, hot damn. Right? Yeah. Like, right? I want to be Murphy <laughs> Brown. I'll never forget <laughs> Dan Quayle. I was just saying that Dan on Quayle. Murphy Brown. Yes. The, the fictional character, Murphy Brown, he's like attacking her like she was a real journalist. She was a single mom. And I remember they did this piece where she was like, you could blame, you know, for the deterioration of modern day society, you could blame drugs, you could blame crime, or you could blame... Me. <laughs> <laughs> and so if it can stay that timely, right. I think it will That's be successful. And, and I think Thank it's you. interesting, too, because let's look at Candace Bergen, that she's been an actress for yeah. how many decades? So just in her own personal experience in the entertainment industry, how that might inform the storyline. All right. So I missed you guys last week. You were on vacation. Yeah. You were off. I was home okay, in you were home. Pacific Northwest. And you were on vacation, too, and I was on vacation. Wow. So it was yeah. a great week for vacation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was in Montana with my family, and let me tell you, it was, it was life-changing. Mm. Oh, God's I, country. I finally realized, there's Doug, there we are at um, uh, Old Faithful in, oh, nice. in oh, Yellowstone cool. National Park. And there, it's going off. Does it really like, just go like a timer? Just no, I got to tell you, it was like... Emotional. Okay. No, no, not emotional. I was like, it's a geyser. Yeah, okay. It goes off I said to Doug, I could put my thumb underneath the faucet, and it would do, do the you same thing. Impressed no. <laughs> but here, but I need to get you. That's true. To enjoy natural. Things. But I love Montana. <laughs> my feeling about Yellowstone National Park was, it's more Montana. I don't know if it was worth all this drive over here from the place we were staying. Montana has to be the most beautiful place I've ever yeah. seen on Earth in real life. Yeah. Number one most beautiful. We went zip lining. We went fishing. We, fishing. I caught a fish. I think we actually have a video. Oh, there's a zip lining. I hope Can I show you? It's the smallest fish. fish ever seen by man. Now watch how excited I am when I finally get it. There's the guide fishing. teaching me how to fly fish. Now watch how excited I am when I get it. <gasps> That's it. Wait, where is it? That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. The That's fish? the right question, Dylan. Did you eat the fish? It's the size yeah, of my did pinky. You eat it? <laughs> no, no, it was catch and release. Oh, that's Honestly, bad. it was about two inches long. Oh, nice. Sadly. Okay. Fish it's like a little fun. sardine. But refreshing. Yes. Do you feel refreshed? Yeah, I feel refreshed. I was also on my own with the children, which is oh. not oh. a particularly that's not refreshing a vacation. thing. No. That's exactly. A vacation. That's a trip. But we were at the beach. Yeah. And it See, was I was the happening. opposite. I was in Turks and Caicos. We go with my husband's family every year. Ooh, so there's 14 fancy. people that are there to watch Calvin. Oh, oh, and he would nap two and a half hours a day. So then we got to do our own thing. So oh. I actually feel refreshed for the first yeah. time. Let me tell you, I, my Note kids now are self. five, seven, and eight. <laughs> and I highly recommend those ages to you. They, like, they, they're little independent people now. They can do their own thing. They it can was, carry their own luggage. It's, it's like, you know, when they're all, like two, that's tough. Yes. That's like I feel like that's how my parents lifting. thought about me visiting them. <laughs> I'm the real independent person. Now. Yay. Yeah, I'm I sure. hate it. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, great to see you. Nice to see Thanks you. For being. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.